real quick, I wanted to mention that you guys can use code Dynamite to save 10% off any order over at Control Freak, especially for the brand new Black Ops 6 Edition thumbsticks. Every purchase, at least on the Control Freak site, will come with a collector's coin. And on top of that, I want to give a shout out to Furious Gamer for winning my Battle.net Vault Edition code that I gave away, as well as Unalloyed Earth and Quickscope for winning my Gamer Advantage giveaways. What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and it looks like today is a triple upload kind of day since Treyarch just went ahead and released the new patch notes for the launch window of Black Ops 6. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and as a big reminder, we got plenty of brand new article coverage up on Detonated.com. The team is hard at work right now, keeping you guys in the loop with everything going on with the launch window of Black Ops 6. About two weeks ago, we went ahead and launched the Detonated Stockpile, a Call of Duty bundle tracker. It currently has an archive of every single pack from Mono Warfare 2 and 3, with Warzone 1 era bundles coming in the next few weeks. Then, of course, we'll have every single Black Ops 6 bundle as those start getting added, likely with the first season, of course. But you can also follow me on Twitter at DKDynamite1. Appreciate all the support on my video this morning and my big live stream where we gave away a Battle.net Vault Edition code and some other goodies from Gamer Advantage. You can also follow Detonated on Twitter for that hourly coverage brought to you by DTND co-owner Mr. Fajardi. He's been killing it as per usual. But jumping right into our preseason patch notes. Again, it's been rumored that Season 1 is going to be dropping on the November 14th, according to Little Caesars. So these are going to be the very relevant patch notes that are going to be in effect at least for the next three weeks. So jumping right into things, welcome to launch week. You can, of course, preload the entirety of the game right now on every single platform. And again, there's details right here as to when you can play, depending on what platform you're on and also what region you're in. I've gone over that in plenty of recent videos by now. Obviously, right now I have an Xbox Game Pass subscription on my PC so that I can actually boot up the game early with the New Zealand update, but I'm currently dripped out with all the new Black Ops 6 merch, waiting for my update to complete over on Xbox. My Game Pass version, set to New Zealand, is currently performing an update. Make sure you guys get that done before tomorrow morning if you're trying to play early, but I have my Vault Edition over on Battle.net, which of course isn't going to be playable unless I join a friend if they're doing the method. This won't be playable until midnight, October 25th. If you guys are worried about the timer and what it says up here, and if you guys are worried about if you have the game installed correctly, just make sure you guys go ahead and go to Manage Files and make sure that both your campaign and multiplayer packs are downloaded. For some reason, Zombies doesn't have his own checkbox. It's a part of multiplayer since it is a multiplayer mode. As long as those are downloaded, you should be ready to go with the time that you're able to play. As far as campaign goes, of course, we had to wait until the launch of the game to actually play the single player. There was no early access offered, but the story picks up after the events of Black Ops Cold War and the 1980s flashbacks of Black Ops 2. It's going to bring forth an exciting blend of familiar and fresh elements. They're also introducing The Rook, which is a new name for The Safe House. It's a fully customizable one. Not only helps players prepare for the next mission, but will allow for a closer look at each key character as the story progresses. Plus, the campaign arsenal is packed with both new and familiar weapons and equipment, ensuring for plenty of fun along the way. Also, lots of campaign rewards for going ahead and beating the single player. Again, if you're one of those people that wants to jump right into multiplayer or zombies with the full launch this week, at least maybe take some time over the weekend or one of these weekends coming up before season one gets even crazier so you guys can enjoy the awesome single player that raven went ahead and put together for us again you get an operator skin for marshall nice loading screen plenty of blueprints which are actually for the same weapons that the vault edition features mastercrafts for so i think that's kind of cool you can keep those weapons permanently unlocked even after you prestige because you'll have blueprints for them hopefully that makes sense with that zombies they confirm again, we're getting two round-based maps at launch, Terminus and Liberty Falls. They did confirm here the main quest and all side quests for both maps. That's actually really important. Not just the main Easter egg, but all side quests will be enabled at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, 6 p.m. BST on October 25th. So this Friday afternoon is when Easter eggs are going to be enabled. Again, if you're somebody that wants to play everything, I don't think it's a bad idea to maybe hold off on too much zombies killing as of tomorrow if you're playing early from New Zealand because the Easter eggs aren't going to be live until Friday anyway. So maybe you can take advantage of some campaign or multiplayer if you guys want. The zombie team has made a difficulty tuning pass as well to increase the difficulty starting at round 25 and beyond. The Wonder Fizz will only appear after round 25. Plan accordingly and prepare for launch. Another point. Looking to bank some whimsical gobblegums in-game, you'll earn these by successfully completing an Xville at round 15 or higher. One whimsical for an Xville between rounds 15 to 29, two for an Xville between rounds 30 and 44, and three for an Xville between rounds 45 and I guess anywhere upwards. That's pretty cool. Cool way to earn your whimsicals. Interesting. 
And then they, of course, link the other deep dives they've done. Multiplayer, of course, 16 maps at launch, featuring omni-movement support, wild cards, combat specialties, new score streaks, and even more. They released quite a few little blog guides as of the last couple of hours going through how to play, how to navigate through the movement, what all the maps are like, weaponry, so on and so forth. 33 weapons at launch, but most importantly when it comes to weapons, the balancing. So as they said, they heard our feedback following the beta, and they consider launch to be our day one baseline across the entire arsenal. Weapon balance is always ongoing, so we'll be evaluating data and feedback and sharing updates on this regularly. In the beta, they tested a change that disabled aim assist at close ranges. While this was a change in the right direction, we felt that this was a bit jarring when crossing that close range threshold. So we've adjusted our approach to linearly uh, interpolate aim assist strength. This means that aim assist will be much weaker at point blank ranges and smoothly increase in strength out to the short range. Uh, they've improved pistol and dedicated melee swap speeds. Awesome. Slight increased weapon, but melee attack speeds. Adjustments to sway, bob, and overall weapon motions to improve point of aim when entering ADS. Additional improvements coming in Season 1. Improved depth of field across all weapons. And then for movement, added a toggle option for corner slicing. An option to set the hold time to perform a dive to prone or slide, depending on your slide slash dive behavior setting. Added an intelligent movement option to set mantle assist angle from tight, medium, or wide. But then we have multiplayer map adjustments. So as they confirmed, they heard our feedback during the beta and delivering fair and consistent gameplay will always remain their goal behind the scenes. So they've such introduced some additional cover and changes to make firefights a bit fairer. And they also tweaked the lighting on some of these maps. So shout out to Exclusive Ace because he made a really good video a couple of weeks ago talking about a lot of the beta map changes that he noticed following some new blog images that came out not too long ago. But for Skyline, we got some before and after comparisons. They expanded the cover points around the hot tub. You can see that right there. Added a new or added new planters as cover near the far spawn point, and then added multiple cover options throughout the map. So nice tweak there to the lighting, as you can see. And that's what a beta is for, right? Tweak out and uh, iron out all of the pieces of criticism the community actually had. For Scud, adjusted bullet penetration values in the satellite dish panels to allow additional bullet penetration. The concrete wall at the main Overwatch is now broken out, which will allow more bullet penetration to make it slightly less powerful. Panels are doubled up at the side overwatch to still amount a small amount of bullet penetration where there was previously none. Made additional cover improvements throughout the map. Very, very cool. Yeah, there was a lot of complaining about Scud during the beta, for sure. I do like the map a lot, honestly. But could totally understand the issues people had with this area in particular by the satellite dish. <laughs> that got a little frustrating. But Rewind made cover improvements across multiple sight lines. So that's good. Because I think Rewind was probably my least played map in the beta. People just didn't vote for it. And people probably had the worst things to say about this map compared to any other map that was available. And I don't think the map's bad by any means, right? A little bit of an awkward design, but um, that's it for our key map changes. We'll obviously figure out a bunch more once the game does drop. But then audio. Real quickly, I do want to mention, I know there's been this report going around that audio is going to be paid to win. Just to make things clear, with Black Ops 6, as they said here. We're excited to introduce our best in-class audio experience coming to the game with the introduction of HRTF, Head Related Transfer Function, via Universal Profile in Enhanced Headphone Mode, which is available to all players for free. We've also added a setting to disable licensed music across all modes, particularly useful for content creators streaming the game. This is massive. I talked about this when I noticed the setting. <laughs> a little while earlier when we actually updated COD HQ. That's great, but as far as the audio goes, the new audio system, the Universal Profile, is free, but there is an option, and I'm not advocating for it, but there is an option for 20 bucks, I think, a monthly subscription, to create custom profiles that I believe you can share with others, and there's other customization choices with that subscription, but it doesn't in any way enhance the audio even further if you pay for that subscription. Hopefully that makes sense, just to iron out all the fake news that is out there. For a closer look at... Our innovations in adaptive audio, spatial reverb, physics-based acoustics, game sound prioritization. They have a dedicated blog they put out a little while ago. For Ricochet, I'm also aware there was an issue with Ricochet where some people found a really odd exploit to permaban or temporarily permaban other players with some really weird console glitch that people were doing. Not sure how people even figured that out, but that, of course, got patched, and anybody that was falsely banned should now be unbanned, which is great. So if you're somebody that was affected by this, please check your account again, because if you didn't do anything wrong and never cheated in your life, Ricochet should have, of course, reversed the ban if you were affected by that weird exploit. But at launch of BO6, kernel-level driver and monitoring updates across all protected titles, including BO6 and Warzone. 
Team Ricochet, mitigations, live in BO6 MP, including damage shield, disarm, and splat, right? We saw that in Warzone when that guy introduced not too long ago. Uh, machine learning behavioral systems deployed to increase speed of detection. Machine learning detection models added to analyze gameplay combating aimbot. So Ricochet should be getting stronger, right? Things should be heavily improved from what you saw in the beta and how Ricochet has also performed in recent years. Again, without going off on a tangent, Ricochet needs time to adapt to all the new methods that do come into existence when it comes to cheating inside of Call of Duty. Now, you can argue that instead of Ricochet, why not put in a more fierceful anti-cheat like Valorant has? And I get that. I'm actually down to talk about that, but... As of now, Call of Duty isn't going to be getting rid of Ricochet, just to make things clear. Adjustments for future weapon damage patch notes. Whether you're new to the franchise or a longtime fan, uh, understanding how your weapon of choice deals damage is an essential aspect of Call of Duty gameplay. In the past, our patch notes used some terms to describe damage values at various ranges that could create some mild confusion for some players. In BO6 and Warzone Season 1, we aim to avoid this confusion twofold. Creating a new damage weapon adjustment table for BO6 and Warzone, Establishing weapon damage definitions for BO6 and Warzone Season 1 moving forward. Hell yeah. So more transparency on the various buffs and nerfs we're going to be seeing. New in Black Ops 6 and with Warzone Season 1, we're introducing a new table to highlight the changes the weapon has undergone from one patch to the next. That's great. Absolutely phenomenal. So it'll be comprised of three columns, damage range, pre-patch, and post-patch, and rows of up to five to account for each applicable damage range for a given weapon. In each pre-patch slash post-patch cell, the corresponding damage and range in meters will be found. We'll identify positive and negative adjustments with an arrow. So that's awesome, just like what you'll see in-game. So for example, with the C9, here's some adjustments. They felt it was in a good spot as a well-rounded SMG, but with a solid rate of fire. It has higher horizontal recoil compared to other SMGs, so we've given a boost to its medium damage falloff range. As you can see there, a lot of information. Uh, let's get technical, as they wrote. Uh, not all weapons are created the equal, but all of them respect the fundamental principles that the closer your target is to you, the more damage you will deal to them. And then they identify how damage works, of course, for those uh, that need more explanation on maximum damage, medium and minimum, all that good stuff. It'll be linked down below in this video's description if you want to learn more about how exactly these terms are going to be used with future patch notes. As we progress through our future seasons, the teams at Treyarch and Raven will adjust weapons based on feedback and data to deliver the best experience possible for MP and Warzone. These adjustments may include shared BO6 weapons having different damage range values between titles. And again, we'll be seeing bigger patch notes, especially for Warzone, closer to Season 1, which is going to be in early to mid-November. But ladies and gentlemen, those are our preseason patch notes for Black Ops 6. All of the major changes that have been incorporated following the feedback they received during Weekend 2 of the beta. Stay tuned for additional coverage of Black Ops 6 later tonight and a pretty cool discussion followed by a big stream tomorrow morning as you prepare for the New Zealand trip, which will include a full campaign walkthrough plus some additional coverage of zombies. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.